I was sharing with the guys this morning, you know, for, for some of us where we've been praying for things, and I've been praying for this for a long time to be able to go and, and have my, my daughter come and the grandkids and stuff. So uh, that prayer is just passed. Hallelujah. And God is good. Amen. Praise God. Open your Bibles to the book of John chapter 21. John chapter 21. We're going to be continuing talking about the aftermath. Amen. But the theme also, it's alive in Christ. Alive in Christ. How many of us are alive in Christ? There's three of you guys. And me. Hallelujah. Who's alive in Christ? There we go. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are alive. We're resurrected by the power of Jesus Christ. We're not dead no more. We're not dead no more. We're alive in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what we're talking about. Aftermath, what happened after the resurrection. Amen. So if you have your Bible there in John 21, say amen. The Bible reads, and it says, afterwards... Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee, and it happened this way. Simon Peter Th Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan in Galilee, the son of Zebedee, and two other disciples were there, were together. Verse 3 is key. I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them. Let me say that again. I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them, and they say, we are, we are going with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Say nothing. Come on, say nothing. And early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciple did not realize that it was Jesus. Come on, say, well. And he called out to them, friends, haven't you, haven't you, haven't you any fish? Have you have any fish? And they all answered, no. No, they, they answered. In verse 6, it says, he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And what they did, they were unable to halt the net in because of the large number of fish. And we'll stop there. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will remove me and let the Spirit of God flow through me. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. On top of the team theme, I titled today three simple questions. Just three simple questions, and we'll go through them here real quick. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 10, Jesus spoke to the woman at the tomb and told her or gave her direction to meet at Galilee, to meet him in Galilee, and that's where they were at, in Galilee. And we see here in the book of John, chapter 21, after the the, the map, amen, the they found out that Jesus died and resurrected, but they haven't seen him yet, right? And usually what happens is, you know, we spoke Friday. Friday was the word talking about, amen, that even Peter, Simon Peter, went back to his old behaviors, right? Went back to his old stumping ground, as we say here in our, in our ministry, amen? Went back fishing. That was, that was his... Uh, Business that was his skills that he would do, and, and something that uh, that that is uh, pretty in intriguing, if you want to call it, amen. In verse three, is key. It says, "I I'm going fishing, or I'm going to fish." Simon Peter told them, the disciples, and you know that phrase, "I'm going fishing," in the Greek, it means I'm retiring. But isn't it funny that everybody that always want to retire, they all want to go where? Where do they want to go? Right? Everybody wants to go and relax. They want to go where? 
Even though if you don't know how to fish, you still want to go. One day, I'm going to go fishing. And that's where the third term comes from, if you didn't know that. Amen. And Peter was the first one that came out with it and said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out and find me some fish. Amen. I'm going fishing. And the disciples as well follow. Because a lot of times, you know, that's what we do. We follow. Instead of just waiting on the Lord, we follow the direction. Amen. And they went together, the Bible says, and they went to go fishing. And I don't know about you, but how many of us face, and sometimes in your life, face some disappointments in life? A lot of us, we face disappointments in life, or even how many of us face discouragement at times? Even in Christianity, those things take place, especially in leadership. They, you, you, you find disappointment. Somebody will let you down, and you are disappointed, right? There's disappointment. Not only on top of that, there, there's also this discouragement that takes place within our lives as well. And, and the, the fast, easy reaction is, I'm done. I quit. I'm going fishing. Are you with me? Right? And, and that's the quick reaction when things are taking place that are disappointing in the, in the body of Christ. And, and there's going to be times there's going to be disappointments taking place within your life, especially if you're looking unto men. Right? You always put somebody in a pedestal and they're always going to let you down. Are you, are you with me? The only person that you want to put in a pedestal, his name is Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? And we come to church to get some direction and some uh, direction and instruction. And, of course, there's different levels of leadership or, or you want to call it spirituality. We got the newborns. We got the, the teenagers, Christians, somebody, right? And then eventually, once you get to a place of maturity, then unity begins to take place. It's in Ephesians, and the book of Ephesians talks about, amen, to equip the people. And then once you're equipped and mature, then you have reached, basically, I'm paraphrasing, unity. And that's why there's a lot of disunity in church. Let me say that again. There's a lot of disunity in church because we're still trying to reach maturity. Oh, come on now. Facebook caught it. Come on now, hallelujah. Right? You hear people say, well, there's no unity in this place, maybe because we're not mature enough to receive what God wants us to receive. Therefore, amen, we find ourselves in a place of disunity. That's for somebody else out there. Hallelujah. Amen. We go back right here, and the disciples, you know, that you see, you know the story, the disciples fished all night long, right? You heard the story before. If you haven't, I'm going to tell you this morning. They fished all night long, and in other words, they did what they used to do, amen, and they were tired, they were exhausted, and also on top of that, they were discouraged. Why? Because they didn't catch nothing, not even a cold, not even corona. Amen. That's the new term. Hallelujah. Anybody's sick, you got the corona. You want to get rid of people in the church? There's corona in the house. They all run. Hallelujah. Where? Where? Amen. You don't use bomb no more. They didn't catch nothing. The question right here in this phrase as well in the Greek, it uh, uh, was done as, as much as a, a manner, manner of a rhetorical question. In other words, Jesus came and asked them, right, what are you guys doing? It's like, you ever met somebody, they always ask you, you know, it's like, if, if you're repairing a table, you're repairing a table, you got your tools, the table's broken, right? And you're there, you know, going like that, and then comes this person and tells you, are you fixing the table? You ever been there before? Right? Are you, what the heck am, you think I'm doing? Painting that? I got a tool right here, and it's going zzz. <laughs> So I'm fixing it. It's a rhetorical question that's, that the people do say that. If you have a bucket, and, and the car is there, and you got soap, and you have, you're there, are you washing the car? No, I'm scratching it. 
right? It's a rhetorical question. In other words, it was, it was said to what? To, to make sure that you knew what you were doing. For us, we get frustrated as human beings. Can I get an amen? You get the vacuum, you vacuum. Are you vacuuming? No, I'm not vacuuming. I'm just playing with it. Hallelujah. Right? But when Jesus says it, amen, it, it brings that question of where are you at spiritually? When, you, when it's said to them, that's why Peter began to get frustrated. When he was asked those questions, or even the question of what are you doing, and they were fishing, and what happened? Have you caught anything? That's like a slap in the face. Are you with me? Right? But he was bringing, bringing something to, to the table. And when, when Jesus speaks, he speaks with questions and, and, and gives you that, that thought. Hello, somebody. Right? Because he wants you to answer the question. Therefore, you know the answer within your life. Right? Have you caught anything? They didn't catch anything. They were frustrated. They were mad. They were in the flesh. They were actually m more in the flesh now than they were when they started. Right? And then he told them what? To throw the net to the right side. Which was the opposite place. If you look at it, it was the op opposite place of even any idea of fishing. It was the opposite some people say that that's what the rotor was, or that's where all the, make, the stuff there makes the boat move. That was in that side. So it was kind of like an impossible uh, question or thought to do it the other way. But they were obedient to it, right? And the Bible says that he laid the net in the right side, and he caught the net, and he caught the fish, and they counted it, 153 fishes they uh, the Bible talks about it, amen. And they were able to catch it, and they were all surprised, and they were all excited. Are you with me? But when Jesus begins to ask, ask those questions, he did, he did it before. He did it with Adam. Remember Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve found themselves that they were naked, and they hid, and they were hiding. They covered themselves, they were hiding. And Jesus asked them, what did he ask them? Where are you? Right? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. He knew where he was at. He just wanted them to ask and say, say it himself. What about Sarah? When well, she was barren. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. He asked if anything too hard for the Lord. Because she giggled at the thought that God said that she was going to have a, a son. It was laughable. Therefore, she, he asked him what? He asked him, is, is anything too hard for the Lord? What about Ezekiel? In Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3, he says, he, says he, asked, he asked Ezekiel, son of man, can this bone live? Right? Of course, the bones that were in, in the desert, they were dead. They could have said, well, look at it, they're dead. <laughs> but it was a question of what? Faith. Trying to not only resurrect the bones, but resurrect his faith. Are you getting that? Because we get to a place of quitting. We get to a place of retiring. We get to a place of going to the other side. And God is bringing the question, amen, can those bones live? Or what about is anything too hard for the Lord? Okay, you bear some fruit. See, when God speaks to us individually, it's a personal question. Are you with me? When you and I are not, listen, when you and I are not with God or what God wants us to be at, there is no results. That comes out of it. In other words, there's no fish that you're going to catch. In other words, there's no satisfaction. You're not satisfied. You can play the part. We're good. We're good actors. That's why we got dramas. Some of us we are the first one because we are good actors. We can act like we're satisfied. 
We can act like we have it all together. We can act that we are in the will of God. Amen. But my Bible says that without God, we are nothing or nobody. Amen. If you're cut from the vine, amen, if the branch is cut for the brine, amen, we are nothing without God. Unless God is a liar. So I don't know which one. I believe that God is true, so therefore we are good actors. It happens with the home sometimes, not this home. But when they leave, amen, they come back, you know, they leave, you know, out of disobedience. They come back and they're like, the first one, they don't want to lift their hands here when they're in the home. They're like, that's in the home. But when they leave, they come back, they're the first one here like this. So when you were like 10 months in the home, you didn't even do that. But you just left and came back. You're like, Holy Ghost. Hello. We're good actors. Hello, somebody. Knows I have it better out there, bro. You're missing out. And we're like, oh, yeah, he's going to get tired in a minute. Hallelujah. That ain't going to last. Right? What I'm saying here this morning is that without being connected to the vine, without connecting to the true vine, amen, living by yourself, the Bible says that you are cut off from it. And if you're cut off from it, there is no results, amen. In other words, amen, what he's saying is you're not going to live. You're not alive in Christ. Yeah, you're living, you're breathing, you're smelling, amen. You don't have the corona, hello, somebody. You even got some taste in your, in your bus, can I get an amen? But in reality, amen, we are still dead men walking. Can I say that this morning? Well, I just said it, hallelujah. Right? So therefore, amen, we find ourselves with no results. We're always trying to go, and we find ourselves like the disciples, trying to go back to the same old same with no results. And what happens when you find yourself there is no results? There's discouragement. There's discouragement and disappointments and frustration. That's what Jesus came and asked them. Ask them that question. Right? Have you caught anything yet? Or have you caught any fish? That was thinking, no, no, I haven't. Why? Because you're not in the direction of God. Amen. That's what takes place in our lives. That's what's important for us to understand. Then we need to have, if we if we if we if we have a ten percent of our about one percent of our thought and understanding that we need God in our lives, life will be way better than it is now. Because we can say, yeah, I know I got God in my life. Yeah, yeah, I got it. When God is in your life, there's transformation in your life. You don't do the same old same like you used to do. That's what I'm saying. I, I just don't know. I don't get it. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? We see the, the disciples, the net. Listen, God is not going to give you something that you cannot handle. So, therefore, when they caught the fish, it was overwhelming of a blessing. The net stretched. It didn't break. The blessing that comes over your life is going to work. Maybe overwhelmed you. That's what the Bible says that you, you, you're going to receive it, that you will not be able to contain it. What contain it is, I can't handle it. I can't contain it. I got, I got to give it out to somebody else because it's overwhelming. Can I get an amen? Right? That's what God is saying. Amen. I'm going to bless you so good when you follow the directions of God. You did it on your own all night long. You didn't catch no fish. But when I told you to throw it to the other side, even the fish follow suit. Can I get an amen? Even the fish said, I'm appointed. I'm assigned to go that route to that net. Hallelujah. Even the fish had to bow down to the king of king. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. Even the fish already had a purpose in life. And that purpose was to go fulfill and fill that net. 
I don't know how he said it. I don't know how he told them. He probably looked at him. I don't know, but he, I know that he moved to that net quick in a hurry. Faster than some Christians. I had to say that one. That was, that was like tempting. Hallelujah. It was just right there. I had to say it. Sorry. Amen. Next thing, the next question, number two is, what priority have you made me? So Jesus was asking Peter, where in your list or in your calendar do I fit in? I think Christ was asking this question of the other disciples as well. What is number one in your life? Is it family? We love family when we come when we're Christians. I said that when we're Christian because when we're in the world, we didn't even care. Not even for the dog you had. Hallelujah. Am I the only one? We were in the world, you didn't care for your wife. You didn't care for your kids. You didn't even care if they went to the doctor or not. <laughs> the only thing you care is your, your next thing. You didn't care for the rent. You didn't care for the mortgage. You didn't care for the car payment. You didn't care for anything else but yourself. Only when we come to Christ that we start thinking about those things. Only when we come to Jesus Christ, our family becomes number one. And that's the wrong priority. Our family is numero uno. My kids are number one. My wife is number one. My husband is number one. Oh, Lord, please. Right? But in the world, that was... Not even said. It was expected. Right? It was expected for your wife to stick it out in your misery. It was expected for your kids to be there in your misery. It was expected. In other words, it was expected. In other words, they weren't going nowhere until she packed up her chachas and left. And then came to the realization, wait, what happened? I need to change. Right? Or am I the only one? And then we come to church, and in church, yeah, you know, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not high no more. I hope not. And uh, you're, in, you're in your sense, amen? You're thinking now, not 1%, but you got 10% now, your brains, hallelujah. We're thinking more, we're, we're, that life is clear now, you can smell the coffee in the morning, Right? Now you want breakfast before you skipped all breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Now you get upset if they don't make you breakfast. Before you were okay with it. Right? You even get upset if your wife don't cook at dinner time. Before you didn't care. But that's what happens. When God is trying to restore our lives and put our stuff together in a puzzle that has been broken by sin. Can I get any man? So, therefore, once we begin to do those things within our lives, then, you know, priority gets all twisted. Because when you came to Christ, God was the number one in your life. It's called the first love. Amen. Nothing mattered in your life, but you wanted to have a relationship with God, and God was everything to you. So, therefore, you breathe God in the morning. You breathe God in the afternoon. You breathe God in the evening. You breathe God in the nighttime. Hallelujah. You praise God. You worship God. You read your Bible. You read your books. Hallelujah. You were in tune. You were plugged in. Even signed up for that thing. United we can member. Hallelujah. Come on now. Let's go. And then your priorities got all twisted. That God has to dare ask you, where am I in your list? That's what I'm asking. That's what the disciple was happening with. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about the Bible here. That's what happened with the disciples. Jesus got resurrected, died on the cross, resurrected three years with them, three years with them, knowing and teaching them and working with them. Mind you, they had no Facebook. Mind you, they had no Instagram. Mind you, they had no TikTok. They kept you busy all night long. Hallelujah. They are pure and uncut. Jesus' attention 24-7. They even walked with him because there was no vehicles. 
miles, not two, not a hundred yards, but miles together. And then he dies, resurrect, they fall short, and then all of a sudden they want to go and retire. When it just barely started. He already knew that he already knew that was going to take place. That was going to take place. So that's why he told him. He told the woman, "Have him meet me at Galilee, because that's what they're going to be at." I know my people. I know how they are. I know my people in Bo. I know where they're going to be at. Hello. I won't. If they're going there or nowhere. Just they're going anywhere. They're going that way anyway. So meet me over there. Because he was going to bring them back to realization. What is number one one in your life? Is it family, friend? What about work? It feels good having some money in your pocket. Right? What about money? That's what Jesus said. Love me more than these. When he asked them, uh, Simon Peter, do you love me? Simon Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, I, I love you. Then tend my sheep. How many of us, if I dare to ask you, how many of us love God? And it said, shout it from your lung out. 100% of you probably Facebook too will shout it. Yes, I do. Then he'll ask you, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than your family? Do you love me more than your job? Do you love me more than your friends? Do you love me more than your girlfriend or boyfriend? Because that's my MOG. I don't know. I don't know, God. But it says men of God, so hello, somebody. Do you love me more than that? Right? Those are, those are things that are placed in our lives so therefore we could choose. You know, a job is there so you could choose. Right? Either God or him or, or, or the world. There also things are things that we have to choose in life. Those things are hard to choose. But it's not hard when you actually really love somebody. Right? Husband and wife. Your husband, uh, you know, said they were going to give you the moon. They're still trying to get it. Or they forgot about it. They just got your little replica. I'll, I'll get you the moon. Yeah. Here's what it is. A little picture of it. God bless you. After you got married. Hallelujah. Right? That's what they do. A little replica. But I'm talking about that's what happens with the Lord. The Lord wants to give you everything in your life. And the thing is that he's not going to give you a replica. And he's faithful to complete what he started in your life. So therefore, he's going to make sure that he's going to get it done. <laughs> Hello. But somewhere in our Christian walk, we act just like the disciples was acting there in John 21. We desire, the, we, we made a choice, and that choice was that we are going out to fish. Even, remember the rich ruler, even Jesus asked him the same questions. Or Jesus, the rich ruler, had everything that he had possessed in Luke chapter 18, but he would not put God first in his life. He did all the commandments. He followed, that's why he said, I do all the commandments of Moses, what you tell me. I'm, I'm straight. What should I do to, etern- to, to, to receive eternal life? And he said, well, sell your possession and follow me. And he said, what he says, oh, yeah, you just messed up with the wrong thing. Paraphrasing, you messed up with my mula. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> and the Bible said that he went away, what? Sad. God will ask you little difficult things to follow him. Hello, somebody. And that's where we begin to 
come to church searching for something. We're not a, 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 a what you call it, a, one of those churches that want to make you feel good. You come to church. I hear people out there say, man, that church, you go to there, you got to be a soldier. Matter of fact, when you go to another person that you meet their church, they go to another church, and you tell them you're, you come to make your average, you go, you go to that church? Oh, yeah, I see you. You're walking on water right now. <laughs> Woo! Because that's who we are. We believe in faith, and we believe in the true God. Can I get him, man? We're not going to wish you wash it. Are you in me? We're not the frozen chosen. Hello, somebody. We believe in a God that is still living today. The same God of yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that is doing miracle. The God of the second chance. The God of the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Hallelujah. The God that is, has grace and mercy upon a sinner like me. Can I get an amen? A God that gave me a second chance when nobody else can give me a second chance. And gave me the opportunity. Right? To bring a message. To bring the word. That's when we say, what church you go to? Yeah, I go to Victory Harry. What's up? Right? Because they know us throughout the inland northwest. They know we don't play. Matter of fact, some of the churches out there say, you want to get right? Go to that church. I don't know why they say that, amen? And then come back when you get right. <laughs> Go there for six months and come back when you're sharpened. Hallelujah. And we'll take you. And then we'll go sharpen you. Hallelujah. We'll take the challenge. They'll sharp up, ready to go. Now come back, my friend. Sorry, I want to stay here. I need to be here because they sharpen me. Hallelujah. Man, there's no rock on turn on this church. Hallelujah. They kick all the rocks open. Hey, well, there you are right there. Come out here, bro. Amen. Why? Because we are an end time ministry. And an end time ministry, they need some soldiers. Not only soldiers, we need some warriors. Can I get amen? We need some prayer warriors. Are you with me? We need some people, some females, some male, amen, that are going to bow down to God and make war on the floor. Hallelujah. And get a hold of God for those that are lost and bound in our cities. Because I know that the enemy is not playing patty cake. Right? He's not playing. Patty, that's why we get hit sometimes a lot. Are you with me? And we're trying to figure it out because he don't want you to catch it. The devil don't want you to catch it. Why? Because if you catch it, you become one of God's deadly weapon in his hands. They will go to the alleys and byways and share your testimony and has no fear. Right? I used to be at Tecato and Bro, you never even tried a needle. But anyways, it feels good to say that. I don't know. I used to be locked up for 20 years. You're only 21. Hallelujah. Just don't exaggerate your testimony. Amen. Tell them the truth. It's all right. Amen. Don't make yourself look better. I killed three people and I prayed for them and resurrected and Back in VO times, they used to compete on that testimony. Who had the, the worst testimony? They would go around the mighty man about looking. What's your testimony? Yeah, I did this and that. Yeah. So everybody wanted to pump up their testimony, man. I think somebody was walking with a toe tag one time. I don't know. Yeah, I was dead and I came back to life. Look at that. Look, 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 look. All right, you won. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right? But right here, you know, Jesus coming uh, reminds the disciples, uh, at least Simon Peter, about his duties. And he asked him a simple question. Do you love me? That's all. He didn't say, well, bro, you're a leader. You're supposed to be this and you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to act like that. You know, people, they give you a whole plethora of stuff. What you're supposed to do and stuff and give you a whole calendar. Jesus says, hey, do you love me? That's what he said. Right? Well, I'm here, Lord. Like we said to our, our wife sometimes. I'm here, though, right? 13 years and they're still here. I love you. That means something. 
Wives will tell you that husband, you still love me. Yeah, it's been 21. I'm still, I'm still here. I must love you. The same thing he was doing with Jesus. He was saying, hey, did you love me? And Peter answered, yes, I do, Lord. You know that. You know I love you. That's in the verse 15 through 19. And then he, the first one, he says, uh, to feed my lamb. No, feed, the, feed my lamb or feeding his sheep is to take care of the lamb, which are those that are what? The baby ones. Right? Feed his sheep and taking care of the, his lamb means that we are commissioned to disciple and work with them and, and instruct them how to live a Christian life in the church. In Psalms uh, 100, verse 3, it says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his, and we are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20 says, Therefore go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything. That I have commanded you. I think that's the word. That's probably the worst part of it. Probably to teach people to obey. Because nobody wants to obey. Not even in the world. And that's key. We are teaching you to obey. And there's always resistance to that. And the reason they're resistant to that. Either you were too prideful. Or were too self-centered. And our will is too strong. Right? It is when you surrender to God completely that you're willing to uh, obey his commands. Right? When you're there and you're willing and we're teaching, that's what we teach, to obey. That's what you hear people and teachers and leaders in the church. Hey, you have to give or you have to do this. All right, I got to be obedient. Oh, they'll resist. And resist is always what? Issue. But if you take it back to James, the Bible says, resist the enemy, and he will what? We're not the enemy, though. And we ain't fleeing. <laughs> Are you with me? Man, I said resist the enemy. He don't flee. Ain't, we ain't going nowhere. Hello, somebody. Right? We're staying here. We're sticking it out. Amen. We're still discipling. We're still working with people. So our priority, amen, is to tend. And feed and nurture those that are in the body of Christ. Being obedient of the, to the instructions that Christ gives us. Feed the sheep. Tending the sheep. We become people who are willing to give back. And I hear a lot of us, and I'm almost done. I said, give some hope. Worship team, come up here. Amen. I hear people that they want to do stuff for people, right? Pastor, what should I do? Or, Pastor, I want to be part. I want to do this and that. And I, want to be, I, I want to, you know, be part of ministry. But first, let's start working on following the instructions of God. Right? Let's start working on the structure of being com- consistent. Right? Let's be consistent in something. Let's start there. Simple. Right? Come on a Sunday. Let's try that first. Make it Sunday every time you can. Be consistent on that. Then we move to Friday. Hello. Amen. Because we want to do everything, but yet we're not consistent in anything. We're not even consistent in our giving. We're not even part of United We Can. Hello, somebody. We're inconsistent in, in Jack. If you're Jack here, sorry, buddy. But I'm saying we're not consistent. Amen. Let's start there. Let's start focusing. I'm going to do something. I'm, I'm going to change something within my life. Amen. And follow the instructions of God. You know what God wants you to do? He wants you what? To build a relationship with him first. And how can you build a relationship with somebody if you don't talk to the person? You refuse to pray. You refuse to say, God, here I am. Let's talk for a little bit. We refuse to communicate in contact with the Creator, the Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. And then we'll find ourselves in a crisis, and that's when you or us begin to 
cry out even more. Isn't it funny that sometimes when we cry the most is when we are in a crisis? Right? When we, you're in trouble, we're in trouble, we're going to call on the Lord quick in a hurry. And the pastor at that. You know, he's calling me? Huh, what is He's calling me? To, oh, I wonder what happened. Right? You remember where to call or who to talk to. And the last thing is that he was telling, and we're talking about the disciples here. He says, is that your business? Is that your business? And he was talking about the business of fishing. And Jesus wants us to be concerned with our own work. He wants us to be concerned with our own work. In other words, what are you doing? Is that your business? Is that what got you out of your situation? In other words, is that right there was the one that saved you? Was her the one that saved you? Was him the one that brought you and saved your life or restored you? Was it the, 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 the judge that saved you? Was it this that saved you? Is that your business? Hello, somebody. It was not. So therefore, what he's saying, what is your business? What is your job? What is your J-O-B? What are you doing? And he's concerned about what you're doing now. I, 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 are you doing something for me? I'm the one that rescued your life. I'm the one that digged it there into the deepest darkness, deep place, hallelujah, and rescued you from that mud and mire and put a pep on your step, hallelujah, when nobody wanted you. Not even your wife and your family wanted you. Not even the judge wanted you. Not even jail wanted you, but they kept you there. Hello, somebody. I was the one. So he's, therefore, he's asking, is that your business? Because he's asking for you to know, what is your business? I say business because a lot of us, we have that tendency to say, I got to go. I got to take care of what? Is that your business? We're all professionals now. We all got businesses. Hopefully you have permit for that. Hallelujah. I got to go take care of some business. I got to go take care of some errands. I got to go take care of some this thing. I got to go take care. What about God's house? What are you doing to take care of God's business? What are we doing to take care of God's business? You know that we're in the business of restoration. What are you doing uh, in the business of restoration? You're getting restored, but what are you doing? Are you reaching to the hurting one? I, 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 or are you waiting for the community to come together? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you feeding the sheep? Hello, somebody. Are you taking care of the new ones? I, I, are you nurturing those that need to be nurtured? Can I get an amen? Or are you doing your own thing? Where am I at in your list? That's what he's saying. Because surely I die for you, says the Lord. I die for you. And I live for you. We don't see it as tangible. It's only tangible things that we probably move more. If it's tangible. I was sharing with the guys today. He said, if I put a million dollars right here, it says, whoever finished the book I gave you in, I didn't say months, I'll give them time, but if, if you finish it, the first one gets a meal, the million dollar cash. Even the person that says right now they don't, don't know how to read, he'll learn how to read like that. Or find somebody. Come here, bro. I'll pay you 10000 Because, you know, we want it all. Amen. And, and read me this book and tell me what it is so I can just come quick. Hallelujah. I want to get that meal because it's tangible. And I'm part of that. How are you going to give me that million dollars? I don't know. That's, that's fake. I have pictures. 2007, I gave a million to that one. 2008, that person won. 2010, that person won. 2011, you go, okay, you have evidence of the million dollars coming through because somebody read a book. All right, I see it. I see the cash. I'm going to go for it because it's tangible. 
Now, why won't we follow something that tells you the truth and the evidence of it and tells you that I'm willing to restore your life if you obey my commands? I'm going to give you back your family. And I'm, 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 matter of fact, I'm going to make you successful in your life. No, in other words, you're going to prosper. Eh, I don't believe that. You're going to prosper. God, I'm going to bless you over and above. As a matter, matter of fact, you're going to live your life abundantly and overflow. Right? That your blessing is going to come from the right and the left. And you're going to be overwhelmed with it. That you're going to have to be a lender, not a borrower no more. I'm going to just lend and lend and lend and lend. And yet, and yet, we don't believe it. But if it's tangible, big old truck, 2021 right here, if you all win, you'll win this one. Oh, yeah, let's do it. I'm in. But in the spiritual realm, that's why when he went and told him, throw the net to the right side, he was showing them tangible. This is what I could do. You did it on your own for all night long. All night long. All night. And didn't get what? Didn't get what? Nothing. Jack. Okay, right. Jack. Nothing. And you did it with people to help you out. But I show up to the picture and tell you, throw it to the other side. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, watch them. They try to do it on their own. Poor guys. I'm not even a picture, man. And brought it up. If you don't do it with me at the get go, I would even give you more. What happened? This I forget this business. I'm gonna follow him right here. I'm going to stay right here, and whatever he says, I'm going to do. And what happened? The disciples began to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to preach and teach and believe. And therefore, we're here today. Because those men said, I follow Jesus. That's my business. What is your business? Come on, let's all stand. What is your business? What's going on with our lives? They're on Facebook Live. You can stand as well. Right there where you're at in your living room or wherever you find yourself at. Right there. Stop the car and take a second and answer that question. Three simple questions. Have you caught any fish yet on your own? Have you, have you done anything on your own that is successful or proven? And where is, where is God in your life and your priority list? And what is your business? Come on, let's sing a song. I give myself away. I give my 
myself, I give myself to you. Come on, lift your hands right there where you're at. If you're watching on Facebook Live, I'm going to ask you this question, those three questions. I already asked those questions, but I need you to answer them this morning. And by answering those questions this morning, I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. And let him, let's make it personal with you and God this morning. So the altars are open right now. Come to this altar. Remember those questions in your life. Where is God in your list? Come on, answer those questions when you come to this altar. He knows where you're at. But he wants to make sure that it comes out of your mouth. So come on to this altar right now. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it. Go ahead. Here I am, here I stand, Lord, my life is in your hands, Lord, I'm longing to see your desire. Yeah, just lift your hands. You know, when we come to church and we hear a message like this, sometimes we don't understand the message. We're not trying to tell you to quit your job and be full-time and do all this. That's not the message across, I believe. I think what God wants you to do is to, for you to put God first in your life. All those things will come later. Later, not now. But I think he's to say, put me, put me first. Put me first in your life. Don't put those things first before you, before me. 
That's what he's saying. Make a priority. Sunday belongs to God. Give me that at least. Right? Start there. That's what he's saying. But we can read it and say, well, yeah, quit your job, follow, do all that and stuff. Yeah, that's later. Probably if you're called to be a pastor, you're called to be an evangelist, all that stuff comes later. Right now, you have to work on your priorities. Right now, your relation needs to be established. Because we can all drift away just like Peter did and deny Christ three times. Doesn't matter how long you've been in church. We can all drift away. And find ourselves denying Christ by saying, I don't go to that church. I don't do that no more. You're denying them. Hello. I could do it on my own. He probably heard that since the get-go, since Adam and Eve. And then he placed a scripture there in John chapter 15 about the vine. Just for all of us. Like my brother Albert says, they're all in red. So he said it all himself personally you can't do nothing without him and if you don't then he'll cut us off and that's that's hard because nobody likes to feel rejected we go through it when people get rejected here in church imagine God cuts you off right that's a long message there but anyways that's what we're saying establish your relation with God that's what he wants and you begin what, by what? By plugging in, getting a hold of God, building a relationship with God. Line up yourself. Be a tither. Be a giver. United we can. All that stuff. Line yourself. Right? And eventually you'll find yourself that you're in a different level. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Right now, Father God, I pray you'll move right now in a special way this morning. Touch people's life, Father God. Seal this message, Father God. Seal it in our lives. Seal it right now in our lives, Father God. That we will be transformed by your power. Transformed by your word. In the name of Jesus. We're going to sing it one more time. Let's sing it one more time and then, then we'll, we'll dismiss you. Let's sing it one more time. One more time. I give myself away. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching Facebook Live. Thank you for attending. God bless you. We'll see you throughout the week. Come on, let's build that relationship with the Lord. God bless you.